Are Mormons Christian? Quick answer, yes. We're not Mormons though. That's a nickname given to us by the government. The real name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But on my page, I constantly get accused of not being Christian. And I realize there's three things. One, we don't believe in the Trinity. Two, we believe in a doctrine of deification, which is the ability to progress and one day become like God. And three, the Book of Mormon. So out the gate, one, no, we don't believe in a Trinity. The Trinity was made up in the Council of Nicaea. Now check this out. The Council of Nicaea was basically the scholars at the time, and they couldn't agree on who they believed God to be and Jesus Christ to be. So they had a theological debate on it. Why would I believe in who man tells me God to be when God already told me who he was? If you look in, in Matthew 3, when Jesus Christ was baptized, the final verse is when God says that he's proud of his son. When Jesus Christ is on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So we understand there's a distinction between father and son, but they are one in gold. They're one in nature in the way that they serve the same purpose, which is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. And no, I would not be entertaining your arguments in the comment section. So if you're anti or hate the church, you're just going to be talking to yourself. I do my best to keep the peace. All right, y'all. Don't you love what happened at the end of that video? It really sums up the entire issue when it comes to Mormonism or the Church of Latter-day Saints. It's not really a theological issue per se. It's really an epistemological issue. You know, he, he basically is not interested in what you have to say. I'm going to spread misinformation. I'm going to spread false facts. And I really don't, re don't really care what, what you say in, in, in terms of your rebuttal, what you say in the comments, because they're not interested in uh, ascertaining the historical facts. They're not interested in understanding what is actually true. They believe the Book of Mormon is true because the Book of Mormon says it's true. It's circular reasoning. This comes to this epistemological issue. You can't take everything that makes up Orthodox Christianity and then change it and then call yourself a Christian. There's a reason why you guys called yourself Mormons. You know, this is the whole idea where he says, oh, you know, it's not really the real name where we're called the Church of Latter-day Saints. That was only up until 2018 when President Nelson actually had a private revelation and they had to be called the Church of Latter-day Saints. There's a CNN article, there's on your forums, you guys talk about it. It's not as if that uh, you weren't known as Mormons, that that wasn't the real name. That's how you guys called yourself. You labeled your websites, your paraphernalia, all the uh, marketing materials, Mormonisms, and then he had a private revelation and changed it. There's nothing about what is the real name. You know, you can't take these basic orthodox issues of Christianity, change them and call yourself a real Christian. You list three things, the Trinity, deification and the Book of Mormon. So let's have a look at it. You say that the Trinity was made up at the Council of Nicaea. No, the Trinity, its language was articulated at the Council of Nicaea. They understood it's a very complex issue to understand the nature of who Jesus is to the Father. Okay, it was a very complex issue. And the bottom line is this, it wasn't a creation at Nicaea, the idea of it. Even one of your most famous Mormon scholars, who's somewhat of a skeptic, but still a Mormon, is that even he believes that Genesis, the one that we have today, was formulated in the 5th or 6th century BC. Okay, obviously traditional scholars believe it's much older, but even if you just take that understanding of when Genesis was created, it says in Genesis 19.24, that the Lord Yahweh rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Yahweh out of heavens. We see two distinct Yahwehs in the same sentence. The issue being there's only one Yahweh. So this is the problem when it came to it. That we see there's the same thing in Daniel 7. Daniel 7 dates back even from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from a skeptical standpoint, to the 2nd century BC. Way before, hundreds of years before Nicaea. And it says that one like a son of man, one that looks like a human, will be given glory, dominion, in the kingdom and that all nations and languages and peoples will serve and worship him all right this is the same scripture that jesus quotes to caiaphas why he was charged with blasphemy he claimed to be that yahweh figure that is deserving of worship and glory you can't do that you can only worship yahweh this is the issue is that there was these the visible Yahweh and then the invisible one. There was this understanding of these two manifestations, these two persons of the one being of God. Okay. In terms of articulating that language, that's what happened at Nicaea. So you're just spreading false information as to that it was a creation in the 4th century AD. It wasn't that. It was a struggling issue in order to, have to define over centuries these two powers in heaven. There's a great book on it. You should read it. Then you take the understanding of deification. You know, this is the most anti 
Christian thing. You know, you take these little truths when it comes to uh, the Bible and you twist it and you and you invert it. This is this idea that you, know, you can become gods yourself because that is what the Father did. The Father was once flesh and bones and that he became a god and that he had his own world and had his own spiritual offspring and spiritual wife and you're going to do the same thing if you do a good enough works. This is not Christianity. You don't even have an eternal God. Could you believe the Father was once a man? You have no eternal God. There is no such thing when it comes to Mormonism. And this is the difference, one of the major differences in the Bible. Okay, And then you come down to the Book of Mormon. And this is a classic example. The Book of Mormon itself says in 1 Nephi that many precious portions were lost after the time of the apostles. That the Bible was corrupted after the time of the apostles. That's very clever because Joseph Smith knew what he was doing. So he could inject where the Bible was true and where it wasn't true with his Book of Mormon. And that's exactly what you just did. You just said that the Trinity is fake and that I don't need to believe what a council of men said about God. But... I'm then going to quote the Bible in order to demonstrate that the Father and Son are distinct from one another. You don't even have the courtesy to actually represent properly what Trinitarians believe. We also believe that the Father and the Son are distinct from one another. And you even said that they share the same nature. I know you made a mistake there, but that's what we believe. They have the same essence, being, nature, but they're distinct from one another. So the bottom line is, is that you pick and choose which scriptures are valid in order to suit your argument. And that is what Joseph Smith did. He said, this portion of the Bible is corrupted. This portion of the Bible is corrupted. But the Book of Mormon is going to clarify which is correct and which isn't. And you guys don't even understand that the scroll of Isaiah... The scroll of Isaiah found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. You see, when Joseph Smith actually wrote the Book of Mormon, okay, he was more than likely aware, right, from whatever help that he had, that the earliest manuscript we had of Isaiah was dated to 1000 AD. Okay, and so that he wrote himself in his version, his translation of the Old Testament, because he wrote his own translation, he wrote himself into the, the book of Isaiah. And so the bottom line is he knew that his theory was that after the time of the apostles, it was corrupted, the Bible, so I can write myself in there because the latest manuscript we have is 1000 AD. Well, the bottom line is the Dead Sea Scrolls, we found a whole scroll of Isaiah dated at least two centuries before Christ before the apostles. And guess what? It matches up 99% to that scroll a thousand in 1000 AD, approximately 1200 years later. It matches up perfectly. And guess what? There's no mention of Joseph Smith because Joseph Smith made it up. So the bottom line is you're not interested in historical facts. You're not interested in truth or reason because you just believe the Book of Mormon is true because the Book of Mormon says it's true, even though all the historical data disproves Joseph Smith. So please, before you go out and attack uh, Christian Trinitarians, before you go out and say that you're a real Christian, why don't you look at the historical data? Why don't you see Joseph Smith or who he was? All right, you married a 14-year-old girl. He had 30 or 40 wives. Okay, this is, wasn't a good person. Look at the founder. Look at the founder. He's saying awful things about our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, Yahweh made flesh. He's saying he's the spiritual brother of Satan. Okay, this is not Christianity. Wake up to yourself.